His first European summit and now, most probably, his last. Rarely has a British Prime Minister been so popular in this company as the moment Boris Johnson signed an agreement to leave. As a new arrival, Angela Merkel showed him round a mixture of introductions, congratulations and goodbyes, even an affectionate slap from the President of Cyprus. A warm embrace from Xavier Bettel, with whom he had that famous disagreement in Luxembourg. And a salute for President Macron before being drawn into one of those famous handshakes. This is not a sign that Europe wants Britain gone. The applause round the table, more an expression of sheer relief that this three-year saga may soon be over. Johnson had appeared alongside Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker to announce that three weeks of intense negotiations had finally borne fruit. We have a deal. And, importantly for the British, that the October the 31st deadline may yet be met. It means that uh, we can deliver a real Brexit that achieves our objectives. And it means that the UK leaves whole and entire on October the 31st. And, it, uh, first, and I hope very much now that uh, my fellow MPs in, uh, in Westminster uh, do now uh, come together uh, to get uh, Brexit done. There were questions aplenty, I, uh, but Jean-Claude Juncker thought it not the moment. I have Jean-Claude's the boss here. Yeah. But on everyone's mind was whether Boris Johnson wants any further extension to be explicitly ruled out. Are you urging your fellow leaders to block an extension this evening? I certainly think there's no case for delay. That question of what happens if MPs vote down the deal on Saturday wouldn't go away. Number 10 would dearly love the other 27 to declare it's this deal or no deal, with no further delays possible. Mr Juncker came close to saying that. If we have a deal, we have a deal. And there is no need for prolongation. That's not only the British view, that's my view too. At his press conference, Boris Johnson, with a distinct spring in his step, wouldn't say if he'd asked, but it's clear that's what he'd like. I don't think that delay is, is to the advantage of the, of the UK or indeed of, uh, of the whole of, of, the, uh, of, of, of Europe. I think people want to, to move this thing on. On this issue, the other leaders have remained resolutely silent today. It won't be mentioned in the conclusions from this summit. When, if they are asked, it seems likely that they would grant another delay, but they would do so with heavy hearts. There is, of course, satisfaction a deal has been done. But as European leaders emerged from their discussions, the talk was of regret. What I feel today is, frankly speaking, sadness. Because in my heart, I will always be a Remainer. And I hope that if our British friends decide to return one day, our door, our, our door will always be open. It's a little bit like uh, an old friend that's going on a journey uh, or an adventure uh, without us and we really hope it works out for them. Uh, but I think there will always be a place at the table for the United Kingdom if they ever choose to choose to come back. And that's what today means. If Boris Johnson has the votes in Westminster, the UK will leave the EU in almost exactly two weeks' time. James Mates, News at 10, Brussels.